Hello everyone, Dr. Polaris here. The cats of the family Felidae hold a powerful place in the human collective consciousness. Whether they be domestic cats curled up at our feet, or lions, leopards and tigers stalking their prey in the undergrowth. United by the possession of reduced tooth counts suited for hypercarnivorous diets, retractable claws and an inability to taste the sweetness of sugar, Felids are among the most successful modern mammalian carnivores. For our early bipedal primate ancestors, large cats would have been among their most feared predators out on the savannas of East Africa, and we still give these animals an air of power, ferocity and grace in many cultures today. While Felidae as a family first appeared during the early Oligocene, just after the end Eocene extinction event, Basal members of the group, such as Proilurus, were generally fairly modest in size, and were often overshadowed by other predators, such as Hyenodonts and Amphicyonids. During the first half of the Miocene, the saber-toothed cats arose in Africa, and soon migrated into Eurasia and North America, quickly growing to large sizes, and excelling in the role of ambush predators. In contrast, the other two subfamilies of Felids, the Felines and Pantherines, appear in the fossil record only during the late Miocene, with DNA analysis indicating that the two lineages diverged from each other 11.5 million years ago, probably in Central Asia. However, early fossil remains of these animals are just as elusive as living cats in the wild. This is particularly true of the subject of this video, the so-called big cats of the subfamily Pantherinae. Despite the divergence dates with Felinae mentioned earlier, the oldest known members of this group first appear towards the end of the Miocene. The recently described genus Pachypanthera has been identified as one of the most ancient pantherine cats, with the animal known from partial remains recovered from northeastern Thailand that date to between 9 and 6 million years ago. Dwelling in a tropical ecosystem consisting of closed forests, swampy river systems, and more open savanna grassland, Pachypanthera would have been a robust ambush predator with particularly powerful jaws and molar teeth equipped for the delivery of deep, puncturing bites. Although only known from fossilised skull material, it has been estimated that this cat weighed in the region of 142 kilograms, or 313 pounds, about the size of a female African lion. This is very large for a non machairodontine cat of the time with Pachypanthera being able to prey on a wide variety of animals, including contemporary pigs, bovids, and the hippo-like anthracotheres. Before the description of this genus in 2023, it was widely acknowledged that the most ancient known pantherine was an animal identified as Panthera blythei, which was native to the late Miocene and early Pliocene of Tibet between 5.95 and 4.1 million years ago. It is known from a partial skull that was initially thought to show close similarities with the modern snow leopard, and P. blythei was considered to be a sister species of this mountain-dwelling cat. However, reanalysis of these remains have revealed a closer relationship to the living clouded leopard of East and Southeast Asia, which belongs outside of Panthera in the genus Neophilis. Due to this, P. blythei has also been removed from Panthera and placed in its own unique genus, Paleopanthera. According to the author of the 2023 paper that proposed this change, Helmut Hemmer, this means that the modern clouded leopards are specialised descendants of Paleopanthera that adapted to a forest-dwelling existence. Regardless, Paleopanthera blythei was slightly larger than living Neophilis, weighing between 20 and 25 kilograms, and would have inhabited the high, cool, temperate plains of late Miocene Tibet, perhaps living much like a snow leopard, ambushing prey like the very large ground squirrel Apioscurus. Another mysterious species of potential pantherine, Myopanthera pamiri from the late Miocene of Turkey, has recently been reclassified as another species of Paleopanthera as well. This has therefore left the origins of the genus Panthera somewhat more mysterious than before, with the most ancient attributable remains now being African in origin. Fossils of potential Panthera species have been uncovered from South Africa that date to between 2 and 3.8 million years ago. At present, the oldest named Panthera species seem to be from the Pliocene age Lytoli site in Tanzania, dating to circa 3.6 million years ago. Two species were present here, 
with their exact identity being a source of controversy since their discovery in 1987. One form was lion-sized, and the other was a leopard-like animal, which was sometimes classified as either an early leopard or a species of puma. Recent studies have shown that the Laetoli lion was not a lion, and the Laetoli leopard was not a leopard. The lion-like form has now been given its own species, Panthera principalis, and probably represents a basal lineage within the genus. Another early member of Panthera was P. paleosinensis, which was native to northern China between 2 and 3 million years ago. Although this animal is sometimes referred to as being ancestral to the tiger, this is inaccurate, as P. paleosinensis shares traits with all modern big cats. Surviving remains suggest that this species was robust and heavily built, appearing somewhat similar to the modern jaguar. On the other hand, the leopard-like form from Laetoli was almost certainly a member of the genus Puma, which of course still survives in the Americas today, and was therefore not a member of Pantherinae at all. So where were the ancestors of living pantherines in all this, I hear you ask? Well, the late Pliocene, early Pleistocene large cat from the South African sites of Bolt's Farm, Swartkrans and Cromdry is now classified as Panthera shawi, and was a close relative of both lions and leopards. In terms of size, it was comparable to a small lion, and almost certainly possessed a spotted coat, much like leopards, and to a lesser degree in lion cubs before they age into maturity. All of these African pantherines lived alongside Australopithecus species, Paranthropus, and early members of the genus Homo, and I'm sure they would have preyed on their ancestors if given the chance. The first evidence of true leopards is demonstrated by fossil remains uncovered in East Africa circa 2 million years ago, after which they spread into Eurasia, starting by around 1.2 million years ago. Early members of the lion species complex which would later include Panthera fossilis, the Eurasian cave lion P. spelea, and the American lion P. atrox, also appeared by around 2 million years ago at the Olduvai Gorge site in Tanzania. It is thought that the earliest relative of the jaguar was the European species Panthera gombazoidensis, which dwelt in the early to middle Pleistocene of what is now Italy, the UK, France, Germany, Spain and the Netherlands. This animal possibly evolved from African ancestors, much like the lion and leopard, although developed in Eurasia. Although a recent study published in 2022 suggests that this species may have been more closely related to tigers, this result has not been replicated elsewhere with a greater body of evidence placing P. gombazoigensis as ancestral to jaguars. Recent discoveries appear to confirm this, with the naming of a new subspecies, Panthera gombazoigensis jinpuensis, from the middle Pleistocene of northeastern China. This animal was similar in size to its living American cousin, and possessed powerful robust jaws. It was almost certainly a solitary ambush predator with a spotted coat and flexible habits, seeing as this species inhabited a wide range consisting of much of Eurasia. This fills in an important gap in the fossil record, and nicely demonstrates how the ancestors of the jaguar entered North America from Asia during the Middle Pleistocene. The first members of the modern species P. onca appear in the United States by roughly 1.8 million years ago, in the form of P. onca augusta. This animal lived across much of the US and extended down into Mexico, being largely similar to living jaguars, albeit slightly more massive at up to 150 kilograms, with some males potentially reaching 200 kilograms or over 400 pounds, and possessing a taller and less stocky build. This suggests that Augusta was more adept at hunting in open environments than its living relative, and would have been capable of preying on a variety of mammalian megafauna, including horses, camelids, peccaries, and the giant beaver Castoroides. It would have lived alongside and competed with fellow cats Smilodon fatalis, the cheetah-like Miracinonyx, and the American lion, as well as the bear Arctodus simus and direwolves. It became extinct at the end of the Pleistocene about 11,000 years ago, probably due to the collapse of its prey base, with P. onca pushing its range southwards. The species entered South America at some time during the later Pleistocene, producing the imposing P. onca mesembrina, which lived in what is now Argentina and Chile at the end of this period. Possessing the robust build of the living jaguar, but to an even greater extent, 
this powerful predator potentially weighed up to 231 kilograms or 509 pounds, being similar to lions and tigers in terms of size. This was probably due to a combination of factors, including the effects of living in a cold climate, the size and availability of megafaunal prey, as well as life out on the open plains. A cave painting from the El Ciebo archaeological locality in Santa Cruz, Patagonia, bears an illustration of a large spotted cat, which is probably meant to represent this animal. Unlike living jaguars, Mesembrina fed exclusively on grazing mammals, such as the horse Hippidion, llamas, and the ground sloth Mylodon remains of which are often associated with gouge marks, indicative of hunting by this large cat. Bones of these herbivores have been found in large accumulations in Patagonian caves, suggesting that Mesembrina was capable of dragging prey long distances back to its lair to consume them in safety. Like P. Onca Augusta, this species died out at the end of the Pleistocene, leaving only the modern P. Onca Onca, which, on the basis of genetic evidence, first evolved between 510,000 and 280,000 years ago in northern South America as a forest-adapted form. After the extinction of North American jaguar populations circa 11,000 years ago, P. Onca Onca successfully migrated into Central and North America, having a significantly wider range than they do today. Indeed, jaguars were once common across all of Mexico and the southwestern United States, but have since been reduced to remote pockets in the former, and have almost completely vanished from the latter due to human interference. Moving back to Asia, where pantherines first evolved, we come to two living species that are probably each other's closest relatives, the snow leopard and the tiger. As mentioned earlier, it was once thought that the snow leopard was a descendant of the late Miocene Panthera blythei, although recent studies have suggested that this may not be the case, with blythei being assigned to the more basal genus Paleopanthera. As such, snow leopard fossils are now largely unknown before the Pleistocene, with genetic studies indicating that the ancestors of this mountain-dwelling cat diverged from those of the tiger between 3.7 and 2.7 million years ago during the Pliocene. Interestingly, a recently described extinct species of snow leopard, Panthera uncia pyrenaica, dwelt in what is now southern France during the Middle Pleistocene, where it presumably lived much like the modern Asian form, but in the Pyrenees Mountains. The oldest known fossils of the tiger, Panthera tigris, come from the early Pleistocene and indicate that this species evolved in East and Southeast Asia. It was once thought that Panthera zidanskii, a jaguar-sized cat from northwestern China circa 2.5 million years ago, was ancestral to the tiger, though it has since been recently reclassified as a member of the more basal Panthera paleosinensis. The earliest members of P. tigris proper include Panthera tigris acutidens from China's Sichuan province, which lived during the first half of the Pleistocene. It was about the same size as today's Bengal and Siberian tigers, or perhaps a bit larger, with an average weight of between 200 and 350 kilograms for adult males. Unlike the saber-toothed cats with which it shared its environment, Acutidens would have hunted somewhat smaller prey, including deer, wild pigs, and antelope, killing them with the suffocating clamp-and-hold strategy typical of pantherine cats. Another species, P. tigris trinilensis, was present on the island of Java in Indonesia by around 1.2 million years ago and was smaller, weighing between 110 and 150 kilograms on average, which is lighter than the living Bengal tiger. It was not closely related to any tiger species alive today, and probably died out by around 50,000 years ago. However, another form, P. tigris soloensis, was much larger, and may have been one of the most massive felids to ever live. Also known as the Ngandong tiger, soloensis was native to what was then the low-lying region of Sunderland during the Pleistocene. Although only a few fossils have been described, one particular specimen indicates an adult male individual that may have weighed up to 400 kilograms or 880 pounds, which is similar to the upper limit for the American lion P. atrox. Like living tigers, this fearsome animal would have been an ambush predator that, given its massive size, could have hunted most of the herbivores it lived alongside, such as the Malayan tapir, Javan rhino, buffalo of the genus Bubalus, 
and juveniles of the elephantoid Stegodon. The species probably died out towards the end of the Pleistocene, as global sea levels began to rise, flooding much of former Sunderland and creating the modern archipelagos of Indonesia and Malaysia. All living populations of tiger share a common ancestor that lived between 108,000 and 72,000 years ago, and once possessed a much wider range than they do today, living as far west as Turkey and the Caucasus region into historical times. During the late Pleistocene, tigers first reached the Indian subcontinent and northeastern Asia, entering Sakhalin and the Japanese archipelago. Those that lived in Japan were subject to the process of insular dwarfism, and were smaller than their relatives on the Asian mainland, similar to modern tiger species that live in Indonesia. However, Japanese tigers became extinct at the end of the last glacial period as sea levels rose, shrinking their available habitat and reducing the abundance of their prey. Sadly, due to human activities, the same trajectory is facing most members of Pantherinae throughout the world. A combination of hunting, habitat loss and environmental changes are putting great stress on big cat populations, with all species of Panthera being listed as either endangered or vulnerable by conservation groups. Let us hope that the future still has space for these powerful and majestic animals, so that they will not be limited to prowling our imaginations, like the extinct species covered in this episode. Thanks for watching everyone. The next video will be covering the large extinct lemurs of Madagascar, some of which only died out relatively recently during the Holocene. See you again soon. Cheerio!